and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. My name is David Kaufman, outreach coordinator at the Sebring Terror Trail. And you are listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Hi, it's Heather. I'm the co-owner of the 17th Door Haunted House. And you are listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Hey, this is Jeff Tucker from Knott's Berry Farm. And you're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Hello, this is David Cantu, the creator of the Haunted Storage Yard here in Burbank, California, celebrating its ninth season, and you're listening to a very special haunt series of the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? Yes, I accept the Coaster Challenge. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? Coaster Challenge Podcast is here. It's time to face your fears. Get that theme park therapy and let us blow through. Coaster Challenge Podcast is here. Your fear can disappear. We know that theme park therapy can dry up all your tears. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? Yes, I accept the Coaster Challenge. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? We accept because you know we're not average. You're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. A journey where people become fearful to fearless, all from riding roller coasters. So please, secure your hats and glasses, and keep your hands and arms inside the podcast. It's time to accept the Coaster Challenge with your hosts, Andrew Locke. Hey everyone, this is Andrew, one of the producers of the Coaster Challenge podcast here. It is spooky season, so that only means one thing here at Coaster Challenge Podcast. We're going to be talking about all about haunts. Uh, this is the first episode of for season three during spooky season. And given that, I am uh, proud to welcome Davey, who is the, the outreach coordinator for Sebring Terror Trail, a uh, haunt here in Florida that we're going to talk all about today. So welcome to the podcast, Davey. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Our, our pleasure. Our pleasure. So to start things off, Davey, uh, why don't you tell us about yourself and your experience working at Hans and, you know, your, your love of Hans and so forth. Um, long story short, I, I, I wasn't a Halloween or haunt person at all. Um, I kind of got forced into it. Uh, my old people, my grandmother, <laughs> she took really? me as a teenager. Yeah, to Halloween Horror Nights one year. I think it was the year they had the director and they had the event split in between the parks, both parks. And oh, wow just going to that it started like a fire inside so i ended up loving it um and then i started uh scare acting with the uh, local haunt here sebring terror trail about three years ago right after covid and i got hooked so nice nice so i gotta ask a couple follow-up questions there uh so you mentioned uh that your grandma took you to the horror nights for the first time she kind of sounds like she dragged you <laughs> um when it was split between Alice of adventure and universal studios florida i was not going on horror nights back then i wasn't living here in florida my recollection on that because i've read up on horror nights history i think that was very early 2000s does that sound about right i believe so i'm bad with dates but i think yeah. it was one at 2001 or two but you're right it was in the early yeah. 2000s yeah, maybe 2001, yeah, which, of course, was an interesting year for Hans because of September 11th, sadly. I remember going to Not Scary Farm for the first time ever that year, and, you know, they it was different than what I experienced after that, and yes, the years went by. But any case, okay, so now with your grandma, like, how old was she then, like, when she took you to scare, to uh, Halloween uh, Horror Nights? I believe she was uh, around that time in her early 50s. Okay. So, okay. Halloween was always her thing. Um, same thing with roller coasters and amusement parks. Really? So is she the one that kind of got you into all that when you were younger? Absolutely. Absolutely. Very cool. Very cool. That's really, that's awesome. I love it when uh, families kind of, you know, get into that passion together. And uh, I've actually done interviews on another podcast kind of related to that, you know, where families enjoy coasters together or whatnot. So that's, that's really cool. So I, I'm guessing you had a, 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 a and, and uh, you know with your grandma is she still alive by the way or uh she just passed about a year ago this month oh i'm sorry i'm sorry uh i'm guessing though you had a pretty strong bond with her because of all of this right yeah. absolutely and that's why i still do what i do today because of her so that's a great way to honor her i love it and i can relate not so much on the haunt stuff but on the uh, theme park stuff um my mom 
Uh, she was the one that was the adventurous person and loved her, loved her adventures to go out and do stuff, which is where I get it from. And she loved going to county fairs and parks and things like that. And, uh, you, you know, again, that she was kind of one of the main people that got me into it when I was young and I'm still doing it today because of her and, and do that to honor her as well. So I can definitely relate. So thank awesome. you for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. So the way the rest of the interview is going to work here is the first half of it is going to be really about you personally. And then we'll get into a few questions related to Sebring Terror Trail where you work. And I'm very curious about it because again, I'm here in Florida. So I, you know, it's kind of a fairly local to me and I'm curious to check it out and want to learn about it and so forth. So, uh, so, you know, in terms of what we're going to talk to you about personally, what we're going to mainly do here is go through, what we call our fear journey, which is how you broke your fears uh, and the impact of that and, and, you know, the watershed from it. And then we'll also just kind of talk through a few questions that are kind of fun uh, questions about coasters, because again, I know you're into coasters. So you want to get started here. So what would you say is the one coaster in your life that has scared you the most? Uh, definitely the Dueling Dragons, Islands of Adventure, since that was uh, what I consider my first major roller coaster. Just the fact that it being inverted and your feet are dangling, I just, I was like, no way in heck are you going to get me on something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so okay so would you say that after you know doing dueling dragons anything since then that you've not been as afraid of the other coasters you've done since and uh, not at all uh, if anything i think that's what started you know just breaking that fear going on uh things gotcha. like that, of course but yeah right. getting up that started right. it now how old were you when your grandma first again dragged you on to dueling dragons I was, a, I swear I was like 13, 14, early teenager. So I was just okay. getting like these bigger rides and I'm like, oh no, a roller coaster, a major roller coaster. <laughs> what was it about, you mentioned like the feet dangling, like would you say that was the thing that scared you the most about it? Was it the upside down? Was it the intensity? What, what, what was scaring you about it? I'd say a combination. I know back then that was in the early years of Islands of Adventure and uh, not just with the feet dangling, but at that time, those coasters would duel. And there yep. were several uh, near-miss parts. And those elements just uh, <laughs> from the ground looking up, it's like, it, it freaked me out. <laughs> right. Yeah, the dueling coasters, you know, the, the, the uh, appearance that you could hit the other train or the other people, and not that it's going to happen, but, you know, it's it, it's sort of a visual illusion because you're going so fast, it looks like you could hit. And, yeah, I can imagine that could be intimidating and looking at them from the ground too. And yeah, totally get it, totally get it. So what would you say is the impact or was the impact of, of conquering your fears? You know, you went on Dueling Dragons, you wrote it, like, you know, what did that, what did conquering your fears there, not, you know, running away and getting out of line or whatnot, uh, how did that impact you? Um, I'd say like growing up, it was kind of like a, a life lesson in general. You know, there's so many things um, in life that we fear, or we just feel uncomfortable pursuing. And uh, I feel like that moment just changed the way I look at things in life. So just, you know, going forward and just facing your fears in general. So you kind of have an epiphany as a result of writing. Absolutely. Okay. So now, you know, ever since then, it, I'm not, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but from what you described there, it sounds like when you've seen or experienced situations since then that are fear invoking, that you're able to kind of fight back. Absolutely. It's okay. a great way to kind of like channel that, you know, a lot of people would say that's like negative energy. So, you you know, channel yeah. it to something positive. Yeah. And it doesn't surprise me at all that uh, you've kind of had that going for you where you know, conquering your fear, undoing dragons, and obviously riding other coasters and whatnot. Since then, you know, you're able to really fight fear and face fear, you know, head on. Uh, because I see that in myself. I see that in so many people, so many friends, people who interview in the podcast here that, you know, I used to think before doing this podcast that coasters were just fun and, you know, maybe you get good exercise, walking around parks, hopefully not eating junk food and whatnot. And, you know, that's about it for the, for the good aspects of it. You know, this is a fun thing. 
but uh, really doing this podcast for these past few years and talking to people, it's really incredibly powerful how therapeutic coasters can be and parks can be. And there's various ways that they can be that. But in terms of coasters, you know, with the, with the adrenaline and endorphins and the, the fear aspects, you know, facing fear in a safe way like this, it really helps empower people to face fear in other areas of their lives. And it sounds like that's the case for you. So I like how you put that. Uh, you nailed it right. You were very therapeutic, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. No, no worries. I mean, yeah, I, I appreciate your your compliment there. I've, I've definitely had this type of conversation and talk about these sort of things sometimes now. I guess I've kind of honed in on some of the, the uh, language, if you will. I appreciate that. So if we take a step back kind of 10,000 foot level and, you know, besides the fear, I know you're into coasters. So, so talk about what other positive impacts coasters have had on you in your life. Um, definitely um, more recently within the, the past few years, I think just connections with new, you know, new faces as we're traveling and friends and even just social media connections. Um, a lot of people, you know, that's a great conversation starter. Like, oh, I went on this trip and we checked out this and we, we went on this roller coaster. I feel like it's a great way to uh, connect with people. Sure. Sure. That makes a lot of sense. And not, this is a bad thing, but this question tends to have not always, but very frequently the same answer, which is empowering, which is very powerful. I should say, uh, which is the, you know, like you said, the social aspects, the, uh, you know, the friends we make and the connections we make and, it's a very social hobby, or at least it can be. So uh, that's great. That's great. So let's kind of move on and have some kind of fun conversation here. Still talking about coasters here for the moment uh, before we move on to the haunt, the haunt stuff, the horror stuff. So what would you say has been your craziest moment on a coaster? This was... Uh, I- I, I, well, it was crazy in the moment. I, I look back on it and I think it's funny, but I had visited um, Cypress Gardens Adventure Park in uh, Winter Haven, Florida, which is now Legoland, Florida, of course. Yeah. Um, they had a, um, some people call it family style, but I like a junior Woody coaster. It was called the Starliner. Okay. Um, so uh, my friend and I, you know, we always liked riding back row. So uh, anyways, we go down the first drop and I can remember whoever the guys were in the front seats of the coaster had lost their hat, flew off. So we're mm-hmm. laughing. My friend just happens to catch his hat. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, what, nice. is, what are the odds of that? So, you know, we hold on to it, give it to him at the exit. And I just thought it was uh, pretty funny because I've never seen anything like that. And the fact that my friend caught it, I was like, you know what? That's pretty crazy. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's that's fun. Uh, that We've had some people kind of talk similar similar experiences and stories like that or objects, you know, flying through the air and catching them and whatnot. Uh, and I don't know how long ago that was. I mean, I'm guessing that was not, you know, like yesterday. Like how many years ago was that 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 happened? Oh, my. Um, I think Legoland opened up in 2011. So, gosh, it's been some years for sure. Cypress okay. Garden. Yeah, it's been some years. Yeah, so back then, maybe it would be a hat, uh, which, you know, hats are lightweight. Even if your friend didn't catch it, even if it, it hit you or him, it, you know, wouldn't have been probably too big a deal. And, you know, minor scuff, you know, and, and, and nothing nothing really serious. These days, unfortunately, and this especially happens on Iron Gwazi, and that's a whole other story, but um, it's cell phones. Because people, you know, they pull out their cell phones, they idiotically want to record illegal POVs and, you know, very, very careless and selfish, quite frankly, uh, in terms of potential de- uh, injury to others. And it's really unfortunate. But uh, and I had stories, people tell stories here in this podcast of more recent years of cell phones going flying and someone catching it and that being their their craziest moment on the coaster. And, and it's great when that happens because that prevents injury but you can't count on that. But uh, it's cool that your, uh, your friend caught the, caught the hat and was able to give it back to the, to the, uh, the folks in the front row. I'm guessing they were really happy that he caught the hat. So they didn't lose it. Yeah. (laughs) We were just all laughing. They're like, really? You caught it. I think (laughs) it it wasn't a cell phone or something. Cause that, that can be a really uh, scary situation. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. I'm a big, big, big believer and supporter, not so much, 
for Thuzies, because for the most part, Thuzies know better and don't have their phones out, you know, or they'll have GoPros and secure, you know, securely with a mount and where they're not going to fall off. It's more your GP, general public that that do these sort of things. And so I'm a big supporter of parks like Universal, Orlando, um, and I'm guessing Hollywood maybe does this too. Well, actually, Hollywood doesn't really have any thrill coasters yet. Hopefully, when Hollywood opens Fast and the Furious next year, uh, I'm guessing that they'll they'll implement a similar system with metal detectors and lockers. Uh, the combination of metal detectors and free lockers is the way to go. It really yeah. is. Um, from a you know keeping your belongings safe, you know, to worry about someone stealing them. Uh, you know, to pay for the lockers, you know, it's just, it's, it's a much better experience. Um, so, and I wish that Bush Gardens would do that with Quasi. They really need to, because it's an intense coaster. It's an amazing coaster, but again, it just keeps happening. People get, the train comes back to the station and people are injured, leaving and whatnot. So anyway, hopefully they fix that in the future. Uh, that's again, thanks for sharing a crazy moment. That's definitely a crazy moment for sure. What would you say is your favorite coaster? Oh, I hate that question. No, <laughs> no <laughs> it, it's a tough one here in, in Florida. Definitely. Um, you mentioned Iron Gwazi, um, probably because I always consider Bush Gardens a home park. And that coaster is just full of intensity and thrills. And it just makes me laugh. I mean, every time I ride it um, outside of Florida, it's a tie between um, probably Fury over at Carowinds and um Pantheon at, at Bush Gardens. Uh, oh, very Gardens. nice. Very nice. Yeah. So it sounds like you like coasters that are, uh, you know, have pretty good uh, sense of speed and, and you know, aggressiveness because all all three of those are, well, Fury is aggressive for B&M. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, you know, it's not, it's it's pretty forceful for a B&M, but again, otherwise, you know, Pantheon and, and Iron Gwazi, similar elements, you know, stall and whatnot. And, um, you know, and just pretty aggressive forces and, and pacing and whatnot. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense. That's uh, those are three of my favorites as well. Absolutely. So on the other end of the spectrum, what would you say is your least favorite coaster? Um, some people might disagree with me. Um, I, I think it's an awesome looking coaster. I love taking pictures of this coaster when I go to the park, but um, the Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket Universal. Um, like I said, it's a great looking coaster. There's just, when when I think about that question, I just think about like things like rewritability and that's always been a coaster that, you know, I'll ride it, but it's not something I'll get back in line and keep rewriting. Um, it's a little uncomfortable. The soundtracks, I wish they'd update that a little bit. And the only other thing that comes to mind immediately is there's just so many brake runs. I've never been on a roller coaster with mm -hmm. like at six or seven break runs right right so okay a few things going back there I'm not necessarily going to go in an order that you mentioned but just first thing with regards to the music uh you are aware of the secret menu right um i was years ago um i don't write it that much anymore but um right I think I even forgot exactly what button or code you hit to have access to that but I used to yeah yeah you hold down the menu button like 10 seconds and then it brings up a keypad and yeah so that may you know that can help with that with the kind of lack of selection of the regular songs and not be not being changed for a while or ever perhaps but uh in terms of the break runs so I get why they're there my understanding of why they're there because that's not typical for a Mauer coaster is universal because the trains are short they wanted to have more capacity so by having more blocks, they can run more trains. Um, you know, it just is what it is. It's a very unique layout because of that. So I wouldn't say that Rip Ride Rocket is my least favorite coaster. However, I do agree with you. You know, it, it, it can be rough and jarring, which is really unfortunate because the layout actually is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. you, you know, in that kind of halfway through, almost towards the end, um, on the second half, I should say, there's sort of those quick transitions that are very reminiscent of an Intamin, like a, like a Maverick, you know, Intamin Blitz Coaster, or even, even a little bit like Hagrid's has, has a section like that in the Spaghetti Bowl. Um, you know, it's got an interesting layout, fun, fun elements, the non-inverting loop and whatnot. It just, it's just so rough and all over the place. So you mentioned that you don't marathon it. So a quick, funny story. Uh, I'm an ACE member, and as part of ACE, uh, we have a great relationship with Universal. 
And I participated in a number of filmings uh, with Universal, that, you know, for commercials, you know, you're filling seats, basically. Um, and gosh, I've done so many of these at this point. And one of the ones I did, it was literally like a month before the pandemic for the park shut down in 2020. Uh, it was Rip Ride Rocket. And, you know, we, we kept having this go on and on and over again. And uh, I don't know, I think I wrote it 10 times that morning. And I was like, I was done with it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Velocicoaster, which I've done, I've done multiple shoots on Velocicoaster as well. And that I can keep rewriting Agrids as well. But yeah, I totally get where you're coming from on Rip Ride Rocket. And it's a shame too, because Mauer actually has some good coasters. I'm not sure if you've ridden any, but they're, um, they're Ma the Mauer spinners. Like they're kind of basically sort of their um, um, wild mouse style coasters. Uh, they're really fun and they're really smooth. Like the ones I've ridden, I've ridden a few overseas. Uh, and those also actually went to Hershey Park too, uh, Laugh Track, and they're, they're pretty darn good. Actually, one of the Disney's best coasters is the uh, Crush, Crush's coaster, you know, uh, it, uh, it's Finding Nemo themed um, in uh, Disneyland Paris, actually Disney Studios Paris. It's a Mauer spinner and it's fantastic. It's a really good family Disney coaster. But anyways. Looks, it looks fun. I've, I've seen some yeah. of my videos on that. Yeah. I haven't been on yeah. it. That's really neat. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for talking about coasters and talking about your uh, the fear journey and all that. I'm glad to see that you're facing your fears has you know helped your life improve and and helped you face your fears. That's awesome. Uh, let's switch gears now and talk about haunts and more specifically, let's talk about Sebring Terror Trail. So, what is Sebring Terror Trail? What's special and unique about it? And also, where's it where's it located? Um, well, the Sebring Terror Trail is located um, at the Highlands County Humane Society in Sebring, Florida. Um, it's about an hour and a half south of like the Orlando theme parks. Um, it's a little bit of a drive, but well worth it. Um, I think the standout for us compared to other haunts, especially if you've never been, is we are completely out in the dark Florida woods. Uh, this isn't a haunted house. Uh, this isn't a scare zone. This is just a long, dark trail. Nice. Sounds really creepy, which is uh, great. That's awesome. Yeah, there are a number of haunts out there that kind of are like that, where they're not mazes or houses. They're more natural, so to speak, mm -hmm. you know, without those those kind of uh, artificial structures. So interesting. Okay. Now, speaking of it, you know, being a trail, a long trail in the woods, uh, you guys build Sebring Terror Trail as the longest haunted trail in Florida. So what is the length of the trail, like in terms of like how much, how much walking you're going to do, like the, you know, how, how long it is and how much time it typically takes to go through it? Um, uh, our team, uh, they had posted online, it's uh, about three fourths of a mile. And depending on um, the group or your walking speed, it takes anywhere on average to about a half an hour, sometimes up to 45 minutes to walk through the entire trail. Wow. Wow. That's insane. That's a really long trail. I, I Clearly, it is the longest trail in Florida. And I'm assuming the way it works is when you're done, it kind of loops back to where you started. Yes. And that's one of the things I liked uh, before I got involved volunteering, I, I attended that event and uh, other haunts in Florida. We go all over Florida. And that was one of the things I liked about it was that loop. So, you're not like leaving in a whole different spot, feeling lost, so to speak. Right. It's right. really well organized. And I think you mentioned this earlier, Davey, but how long has the Seabring Terror Trail been around? I believe it's been going on for about 15 or so years. I know they had to take, I believe, two breaks. Um, we had the bad hurricane several years ago, and then 2020 due to COVID, they took that off and... Um, last year was going to be our final season uh, there was a number of factors going on with that but um uh, we decided to come back um, based on uh, what the public wanted and some donations and there's a few other factors there but to answer your question this is officially our 14th season oh okay nice nice been around for a while very cool very cool so you already kind of talked about how it's different and i get it it's not maze based and all that but you know, Florida is known for having pretty good independent haunts. Uh, for example, I've been to uh, Screamageddon, Sir Henry's Haunted Trail. Actually, uh, interviewed folks from both of those uh, independent haunts here in Central Florida, here on the podcast. And those are, you know, maze-based 
Uh, although Sir Henry's is a little bit of, even in the name, a little bit more trail-based. And actually, even Scream Again has one of their haunts is a, a trail-based one. But just in terms of like the, you know, the scare actors, the level of intensity, you know, how would you compare Sebring Terror Trail to other independent haunts that tend to be more edgy than say theme park haunts? I don't want to break my rule I have for myself because I promised myself I would never compare haunts, but uh, um, there are there are some similarities, um, uh, especially with uh, Sir Henry's. So I would probably say Sir Henry's generally has three independent trails broken apart. Yeah. So you took those three trails at Sir Henry's, for example, and just turned them into one big trail and broke them up into... Um, uh, scare scenes or zones I'd, right. I'd put terror trail along those lines because it is outdoors got it got it okay and you know given the length both time and distance of steaming terror trail is it where let's say you've never done it before is it where you never know when a scare is going to happen like it could happen any time during those 45 minutes for the most part, um, you will know. I don't want to spoil anything for our sure. viewers, listeners, but uh, for the most part, um, they have these, uh, area, like last year for our 13 years, 13 fears, they had the trail divided into 13, um, I call them scare zones, but they're really like scare scenes. So as you're casually walking through, you'll you know approach this scene. But what we tried to do last year was something different in between scenes we had a couple scare actors in the complete dark with um you know uh, tying in with the trees and the bushes just to amp up the uh the scares got it got it was that well received by the way um based on what we heard yes <laughs> uh, <laughs> people especially our our regular fans that come out every year they they really seem to like that nice i mean it sounds good to me it sounds like a nice plus so very nice okay so what charity is associated with uh, Sebring Terror Trail? So all of the um, money that is raised for the event goes directly to the Highlands County Humane Society. Um, and you can make donations on site um, if you, you know, if you want to not just buy a ticket, but you want to make another donation. So everything is tied in with the Humane Society there. Oh, very nice. As someone who loves animals, and I have two dogs of my own, I very much approve and support uh, of, uh, of uh, the, again, the association, that, that charity in particular there. So very nice. Well, thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. So uh, kind of wrapping up kind of the last few questions during the interview, and this kind of goes back to you personally, you know, these next couple of questions. So you know, whenever your life is over and, and, you know, people that know your family, friends, colleagues are looking back and reflecting upon you, how would you like them to remember you? Um, I always say to myself, like, I want people to remember me by the guy who made people laugh. So <laughs> I, I feel like I've struggled with a lot of things in life. And I feel like the people out there that struggle you know it's nice to have someone in their life that say hey you know that dave guy he was always having a blast always laughing and making us laugh so basically laughter very nice love it love it uh, again the podcast here our mission is all about Im improving people's quality of life mental health and whatnot and laughter is great medicine as the saying goes and big believer in that love and comedy so i, I love i love that you shared that uh, and by the way, so I, I know you're a scare actor there at the Sebring Terror Trail. Do you, you know, you know, obviously people have different reactions to haunts. You know, for me, I don't scare easily, whether it be going through a haunt, watching a horror movie. I'm really into the genre in general. What I really enjoy about haunts is just, you know, the, just the immersion of it, the, the, the costumes, the makeup, the creativity of the scare actors, the sets, you know, the props, et cetera, just everything and just... But another thing that I really enjoy is, because I, again, I don't scare easily, is the other people. It's a, you know, so haunts are very social, you know, going through a haunt. You know, what, it may not even be someone in your group. It may be people in front of you or back of you, uh, and, you know, where they're, you know, like teenage girls or, or whatnot, and they're freaking out every corner. And I, I start laughing. I laugh a lot at haunts. So it kind of makes, reminds me of what you were just saying about you liking to make people laugh. So do you, as a scare actor, 
do you enjoy that sort of humor where, cause I know I'm not the only one that's like this. Like there's a lot of people laughing at haunts and, you know, boyfriends laughing at their girlfriends or, or even girlfriends under the boyfriends if they're scared, whatever the case may be. Um, do you, do you enjoy that part of the humor? Do you see, do you kind of look, look for that? Definitely. I, I feel like it's kind of uh, comparable just as going as a guest or riding a roller coaster, you get that, it's kind of like that adrenaline inside. So when you scare someone getting a reaction where you actually scare them or people like yourself that laugh about it, because I'm that guy too, I'll, I'll get scared maybe a little bit, but I laugh. So it's right. an addicting feeling for sure. If you've never been a scare actor, I think once you try it out, you'll get hooked. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I would love to be a scare actor. I just don't have the time. I travel a lot and I just don't, I can't commit. Same reason why I don't work at parks because given my, my day job, if you will, and other passions and hobbies that I have, which I very much enjoy. It's just, I am thrilled to just have the time to, 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 to dedicate to going to haunts. Like each year I go to various theme park haunts, especially Horror Nights. I live five minutes away from Universal. You know, and then also independent haunts. I travel, usually I go to California, I love Not Scary Farm. Uh, actually doing that this year. It's a, I'm very excited for the 50th anniversary of Scary Farm. Actually have a season pass, gonna go several days and um, just really excited for that. But, uh, you know, I, I at least can make the time for that. But I think it's awesome. I, had, I do have friends that are scare actors and, and uh, I think it's really cool. And I kind of live vicariously through them in that regard. Uh, so yeah, yeah. But uh, I think that's, that's awesome that you enjoy it. So yeah, appreciate that. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So what advice can you, uh, you know, kind of final advice here, can you give those that are listening and, and, and the guise of this is, you know, living better lives, facing fears, uh, living positive lives, you know, any, any pearls of wisdom would you like to share? Definitely. Um, the advice I like to give everyone listening right now, if there's anything, even if it's small or big, uh, just go ahead and make a list of those things and do everything in your power to face those fears. Put yourself out there because um, I'm pretty sure once you get over that fear, you're just going to feel like a weight has been lifted off your shoulder and you might realize it wasn't really that big of a deal. So uh, don't get hung up on it. Um, just go for it, you know. Nice. Love it. Love it. That's great advice. Very positive advice. Well, to wrap things up here, uh, I'd like you to share, whether it be personally or for receiving Terror Trail, of course, especially um, any kind of social media websites, you know, how people can either find you or again, or Sebring Terror Trail. Uh, please feel free to plug away. Absolutely. Um, you can find uh, the Sebring Terror Trail um, online on Facebook. Uh, you'll just simply type in Terror Trail. Uh, their Instagram page is Sebring Terror Trail, and um, the website is SebringTerrorTrail.com. Uh, those are the three uh, platforms we're on. You can go on those and get all the information you need about the event. Uh, for myself personally, um, I, I do uh, vlogs on YouTube, I'm on Instagram, uh, TikTok, all those social medias, at WoDavy. So that's my handle. You can find all those cool videos. We focus mainly on... Um, the Florida parks, but we do travel from time to time. Nice, nice. And that's W H O A Davy, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And I, I came up with that name because over the years, my friends and family were always like, Whoa, <laughs> you're, <laughs> at, you're at another theme park. When are you going to like just stay home? <laughs> <laughs> that's so. hilarious. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, there you go. You made me laugh here at the end. I love it. Uh, well, thank you very much, Davey. appreciate your time. And uh, thank you for telling us all about Sebring Terror Trail. Hopefully I'll get to check it out myself here pretty soon. So thank you. Absolutely. We would love to have you guys out there. And hopefully everybody listening and watching can come check it out. It's a really a spectacular event. Awesome. Thank you. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. If you want to see more of us, we upload every Friday. Be sure to like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. All at Coaster Challenge. Links are in the description below. Thanks for joining us here today.